So it seems like every single time there's an officer involved incident that trends on social media, everyone with a phone and Twitter and Instagram or whatever becomes an expert in de-escalation. It drives me absolutely bananas. But, but these are high pressure situations that the police find themselves in and sometimes have to make spur of the moment, second by second, split second reactions. And instead of trying to solve the problem, oftentimes make w these people on social media make wild proclamations about defunding the police or what I would have done differently if I was in the situation garbage. This leads to furthering the bad relationship between people on the street and our police officers who are out there trying to save lives. Joining us now is someone who actually is doing something to help law, uh, local law enforcement be better at what they do. Not talking about just, you know, the walk, but actually doing the job. The CEO and founder of Blue Force Strategies, Community First Project, and retired Navy SEAL Andrew Sullivan. Andrew, appreciate you being here, brother. Hey, thanks for having me, Carl. I appreciate you guys having me back. And, uh, Always good to talk to another frogman at 7.30 on a Sunday morning. Yeah, exactly. They, uh, they they actually let us get together, which could be detrimental for our, our yes. licensing agreement. But anyway, um, they every week we do this veteran segment where we highlight something good that veterans are doing in the community and for the community. And you actually came on the radar this week. So talk about the Community First Project and how you're working with local law enforcement to bring a totally new way of de-escalating situations. I yeah, appreciate that. And again, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I spent 20 years in the soft community and we're at a pretty integral time for special operations where guys like me who joined after 9-11 mm -hmm. are now getting out. So we have this this group of people with this skill set and knowledge base that are now you know, technically unemployed. And we thought, what better way to use that knowledge and skill to help our communities? You know, we watch these incidents play out on TV and I see it and I know I have the the skill to be able to affect it positively and, and help those police officers through these critical situations. Yeah. And I thought, what better way to do that than to start a nonprofit? So the excuse of we can't afford the training or not wanting to fund the training doesn't exist anymore because we're going to give it for free. Yeah. And that's kind of the premise to how we started our, our business. Well, you know, we're, we're scrolling all these pictures of, of you at the range with different ver variety of law enforcement officers. But the, your your key tenant is the de-escalation. So obviously you need to be trained to deal with the worst case scenario. But us as SEALs, we're not exactly in the business of de-escalation. Like they only call us when everything else has gone wrong and everything else has not worked. So they call us to like go in there and kill bad guys and break things. However, you've taken this whole approach, which is very interesting, from a perspective is like, I've seen how bad it can get, so let's figure out a way to take it down to the point where we're just having a conversation. How do you bridge that gap? Well, you know, I, I would agree and I would disagree. I, I think one of the hardest parts of my job and my, my 20 years in the teams and 12 years at, at Development Group was not shooting, right? Being able to identify a target and realize if I shoot this person, this, this enemy, is it beneficial to the mission or is it not? And so the de-escalation and the target identification part is something we do innately in the soft community. Mm -hmm. It's a really hard thing to learn to do. Um, so to be able to take that to law enforcement, I'm not really teaching specific what to do. I'm teaching a mindset. Hey, if I can raise the threshold of when an officer fears for their life, then I can allow them the opportunity to make better critical decisions when it comes to things like de-escalation or dealing with stress or how to handle a situation that they actually have not been trained for, yeah. which is kind of the problem we're seeing right now is we're throwing officers into situations that they've never seen in training. Right. Well, that's the irony about the defund the police movement is the first yeah. thing that gets defunded is actual training. So you got a bunch of folks. And I mean, like you and I, we went through the CQC thing where they put you in all kinds yeah. of scenarios. They put the hood over your head. They smack you in the face. We've, you know, so when we get to that in real life, we're like, oh, okay, you know, we, we muscle memory. We have the training. It's not a, a foreign situation to us. But like you said, the average officer, I think, shoots about 50 rounds a year for yeah. for department requirements many officers shoot far more but a lot of them have never shot under duress they don't know under they don't know what to do when you know they're they're being engaged by multiple subjects how do you help them de-escalate not only in the moment but also the mental part before and after that you're absolutely right the average law enforcement department is it's 40 hours of in-service training a year yeah. and isn't tactical training that's all of their training and that is just not enough. And unfortunately, the people that can afford the training are your high level SWAT teams and your federal agencies. But when you look at an active shooter situation, that isn't the first responder. Yeah, exactly. You know, so we need to be able to affect 
the patrolman or woman, the school resource officer who is on the scene first, just based on their proximity to the incident. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're teaching, again, you know, is we're trying to give people innate tools to raise right. their threshold to be able to handle situations. And the way to do that is through focused training. Yeah. And we need to look at the culture of law enforcement and how they train and realize that, hey, 40 hours of in-service training a year isn't enough. 10 yeah. hours of shooting a year isn't enough. We need to have a system and a culture in law enforcement that prioritizes yeah. training throughout their careers so that they can grow. Andrew, real quick, I got uh, 10 seconds left. Where do people go to find out more about you? Yeah, please. We're, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, c1p.org. I encourage your viewers to go on there and help support and make their community safer. And any law enforcement that's watching right now, c1p.org, shoot me a message. We'd love to help you out. Andrew Sullivan, appreciate having you on, brother. Thanks, Carl. Great to see you.